All right, so um, while the stragglers are coming in, let's have a little survey. Um, who, who are the instructors? Okay, how many of you guys are in shops? And the rest of you are independent or both, right? Independent, independent, you, you're independent? You guys are independent. Okay, cool. Um, so we are UTD Scuba Diving, formerly Unified Team Diving. Uh, I'm Jeff Seckendorf, I'm one of the founders, I'm current CEO, and Ben Boss is over here running YouTube stuff. Ben's the training director. Um, so we are a classical training agency, kind of at a boutique level. We started as a group of technical and cave instructors, kind of with the goal of bringing that type of diving to recreational, to our open water um, students. So. When you see our open water students in the water, they're in horizontal trim, they're neutrally buoyant, they're not touching the bottom, uh, they're paying attention to team dynamics, um, they're doing team air shares, things like that. They're never like a buddy over here and a buddy over there. And it's funny, so I live in San Diego in Southern California. We dive at a, we do a shore dive, if any of you know the area, at um, La Jolla Shores. And this was the case in LA. Pasadena here someplace, right? At, at Redondo, that we'd be swimming out with a group of students on their second or third dive, and they'd see an instructor standing on the bottom and the students kneeling around him in a, just a wall of sand coming up, and they're like, what is he doing? Literally, they'd never seen anybody kneel. So that's the kind of the consciousness that we bring to our training systems, and it's been really solid for now 12 years, going on 13 that we've been doing it, with no downturn except that we're being copied, which I'm kind of happy about, right? We're seeing it all over the place now. People are adding team dynamics, they're adding neutrally buoyant, they're adding horizontal trim. And I think that's a good thing. You know, I mean, I, 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 I like that we made it up because <laughs> nobody else was doing it back then. And I also like that now people are embracing it because it's, it's truly making better divers, right? It makes the whole community better and, and stuff like that. So I want to talk about coaching as a training model. So we got on this idea that um, transactional scuba courses, right, your, your weekend course, your two weekend course, four days, whatever it is, are kind of boring. That was my feeling, right? So it's two issues. One is like, they, people come in for a C card, they pound through the concepts, they meet their minimum whatever, and they get a certification and they go home and either they never dive again, they use their new certification for an hour, it, there, the retention, which has been a DEMA theme since I started all this, retention was always an issue. How do you retain, right? Now, one thing we know about unified team diving is that one of the ways we retain is through teams. That when you make a team, the team tends to hang. And that's been a really, really valuable thing for us is that we make team divers all over the world. So. I took my background as an athlete and as a coach to athletes and decided to try this new thing. So I took the model that I used as a bicycle racer and brought it to scuba training. So that's what we're going to talk about. So it's scuba um, coaching as a training model. So the point of this whole thing is training does not have to be about certification, right? We treat this, in this coaching model, we treat the students as clients, we treat the instructors as coaches. Same people, right? It's, it's semantics, same people. The instructors are the coaches, the coaches are the instructors, same guy, same thing with the, with the students and clients. But the goal now becomes the process. I wanna do a quick caveat, this is not for everybody. But boy, the people who are in it, it is for. So the idea here is process-oriented training. And again, this is something we know from sports. Process-oriented training basically says that if you do the process prescri as prescribed, the outcome is inevitable, right? If you train a particular structured program for a particular race, your outcome is inevitable. Now, you can't control the other people in the race, right? So you still may lose. But you win your own race, right? So if I train, 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 I do my race, 
I win, awesome. I get 10th, awesome. I know I did my race and I did my process and I did the best I could based on, I mean, I got the best outcome I could get based on my own process. So that's what we started to look at in scuba training. It's like, why are we so outcome oriented? And it makes me crazy. We're outcome oriented because everybody wants a C card. But what does it give you, right? You can buy gas, that's important. You can go some places you couldn't go, some boats, caves, buy helium, all this other stuff. But I don't think we were doing the scuba industry a really solid service by pushing people through certification. So we had to come up with a way that we could train people in a way that allowed them to explore the process and accept scuba more as a lifestyle. Learn from scuba diving. Learn from the things that we can teach you as a diver that actually brought you more fulfillment in your daily life. Right? So the way we do it and the model of it, I'm going to skip through this because we already talked about that, is based on what endurance athletes have been doing for decades, including me. So this is me a couple of weeks ago. I set a course record for, at the World Six Hour Time Trial Championships on a fixed gear bike in my age group, right? Trained, did the process, got my outcome, won it. Awesome. Now I'm in a record book. Four months before this, I set a course record, an hour record at the San Diego Velodrome, same thing. I trained, I did my process, I got my outcome. So what happens in coaching, which is really interesting, and this is what I've learned about. I can self-coach, I am a certified USA Cycling coach, I know how to do these programs. If I do my own coaching, it's a train wreck. We call a train wreck with a capital R. So I need a coach to tell me what to do on the bike. I need someone to define my structure, to tell me what my process has to be, and I do it to get my inevitable outcome. But the cool thing about coaching is, not only in case of cycling does it make me faster, it also makes me better. And the reason it makes me better is because I'm doing stuff way beyond just cycling. Right? I'm working on the mental aspects of, of bike racing. I'm working on the nutrition, hydration, pedal technique, you know, body position, aerodynamic. I'm taking all of this stuff that's so much, in some ways, more important or equally important to just having stronger legs and bigger lung capacity, that all of that better stuff is what makes me a better cyclist. Right? All of that better stuff is what makes our coaching clients in scuba better scuba divers. And that's the, the cool, cool part of it. So I love this by Yogi Berra, right? Baseball's 90% mental and the other half is physical, right? You've all heard this. Apply it to scuba diving. I think you can change the numbers. Scuba diving is like 99% mental and the other chunk is the stuff that most people teach right out of the gate, right? How to use the equipment, kind of how to breathe underwater, how to not hold your breath, and, and allegedly how to keep track of your buddy. Right? These are the, the basic tenets that you know, get taught. So we got to look at training at way beyond the scope of how to use the equipment, how to keep track of your buddy, all that other stuff. And so we do it through all of this other stuff, the mental stuff, the lifestyle stuff, all of that. So we've replaced this with a program. In some cases, we've had people in six, eight, 10 months going along in coaching. I'm gonna show, show you how it works in a minute. But they do the training. We give them workouts, and the workouts might be an academic chapter, they might be a, uh, do a gear list, right? I have all of my coaching clients right now doing um, spreadsheets with all of their gear, their service dates, all of that. Nobody's done it. I've asked every single one of my coaching clients to show me their gear list. Nobody has one. It's like, A, what happens if it gets stolen? But B, how do you know when to service stuff? How do you know it's broken? How do you know you need this hose, that hose? This one's too long. So they're all doing that. Half of my coaching clients who I have right now are looking for a fitness component. I didn't ask them for this, it was just an offer. So we've got them doing, I'm training some of them as cyclists, runners, swimmers, and, um, and we're doing nutrition. You know, one person's trying to lose weight. We got this guy, you know, 
thinks he's fading you know, in life because he's not eating properly. So we're, it's this broad program we're bringing people. Every coach has different strengths, right? My strengths are recreational and technical scuba diving, because I own the training agency and I'm in IT and all that. And it happens to be fitness. We have other coaches who don't want to know for fitness. They don't get the clients who want to do fitness. They get the ones who want to do that. We have technical instructors who get the technical clients. We have recreational instructors who get the recreational clients um, and all of that. So, and people stay in as long as they need or want, which is a really cool thing. So we, had a, we have, have a, a coach in Florida who brought a whole team of people from some workplace into coaching. They all signed up, they all got on the monthly program, and over the course of about a year, a couple of them got open water certified, and they did these workouts, month, week after week after week, workouts, until, and they did the dives until they finally got to the level of certification, right? They did their process, the outcome is inevitable, the instructor signs them off, they get a C card, but man, they are really, really well trained. They're trained in the broadest possible way on scuba diving. Tons of peripheral stuff. We're giving them podcasts and videos and, and crazy stuff and, you know, out of the box thinking. And they get this broad thing that you could never, ever do in this little short weekend course or four day open water class or, you know, $99 class. Sign up. We'll give you the gear too. So, you know, some of those Florida students went through became, you know, in our advanced program, our nitrox program, and they just do the workouts, they get to the point, they do the dives, they get the certification. It's super cool the way it works. So we give everybody a weekly calendar. We use a little third-party piece of software, which I'll show you, and the calendar consists of academic chapters. So in our online program, each class has however number of chapters, and we program those wherever they're appropriate. Live sessions, either on Zoom or in person, however that works. We give them videos, podcasts, we do the equipment thing I just talked about. And then we schedule their dives, pool or open water, depending upon where they are and what they're doing. We do video review if they're not with the instructor, if they're certified, right? Don't send your non-certified students into the water without you. But we send our certified divers into the water without us all the time, so they're not being babysat and then let's do video review, which is amazing because they take their own responsibility for their dive, their photography, the whole thing. And, and we, we look at and sit down and show them to them. So I have a whole team that just started and their first assignment was test the camera. So that's happening now. I think it's Tuesday, right? So they dive every Tuesday night. So tonight, after their dive, they'll upload their camera test. We'll make sure that's dialed in. They can deliver content to me, stuff like that. And then now, each Tuesday, I'm giving them another exercise. I put the exercises at the end of their dives, right? So they're tired, they're cold, they're kind of worn out. That's the time to do skills, not when they're all fresh and excited at the beginning. Plus, their tanks are empty or lighter, so their buoyancy is trickier. I have them do all this at like 20 feet, 6 meters. So that what they're getting next week is what we call bolt snap buoyancy, right? They go in, they put a bag, shoot a bag, hang the spool at 20 feet, put a bolt snap at 17, and the whole team, up a meter, down a meter, up a meter, down a meter, hold for 15 seconds, down a meter, 15 seconds, pass the camera, do it four times, up, down, up, down, up, down. Bolt snap buoyancy, right? So they'll do that, and then we'll look at the video, we'll watch, we'll see their trim, we'll see their awareness, their team positioning, all that. We'll do a Zoom call, we'll put the video up, video cameras never lie, although I have had students come out of the water and say the battery died. Oh yeah, how'd you do? Man, we were perfect. Oh yeah, let me see the video. Oh no, the battery died. So students are less perfect when the battery doesn't die. Um, so we do the review and then we add the fitness and nutrition um, component if people want it. And it's been a really successful part of this, which I think is fascinating personally, right? They're the clients I gravitate to because I love to see these guys turn into, you know, I'm scheduling interview, it, interviews interviews, intervals, I'm scheduling intervals for a guy who's been running forever and has never trained, right? And we're finding out where his level is and we're getting him to become a better runner as part of this program. It's just crazy stuff happens in it. So this is what the calendar looks like. You should be able to kind of see it. It's a third party app. They get a calendar. 
Um, we have a workout library that, you know, we've got all our chapters from the courses in it and all the podcasts are in it and all the videos that we use. And every time, like, someplace in there is Bolt Snap Buoyancy. I built that one up the other day for them. And it goes in the library and then all the coaches can use it. And we just drag it onto the calendar and we build out this calendar. When they finish their workout or their exercise, whatever they're doing, they mark it off. It changes from red to green which is cool, so we can see how they're doing. If there's a sea of red, we know they're not doing it. If it's a sea of green like this guy, awesome, right? The black ones are in the future, the red ones are today. So when I grabbed the screenshot this morning, he hadn't done these yet, but by tonight, those will be green. And so what the workouts look like is they vary, right? It might just have a link to a chapter. This one has a link to one of our videos. So you open up the workout, it shows you the video. Some of them, you know, say things like, make your equipment list, and then here's a sample of how to do that. So we guide people through the workout so they know exactly what they're doing. Then, and here's where the cool part comes in. So if you haven't paid attention yet, pay attention now. Every day they're charged with sending their coach a note. And so inside the app, there's a little communications section of it. So they finish their thing. This was Ratio Deco introduction chapter. Here's his note. Here's the other note. Here's my note. Here's his note. And it takes them about a minute. Once a day, they send a note. Every other day or every day, depending upon what I'm doing, I sit down. It takes me five minutes. I go through all the notes. I answer them all. Reply to the question. Sometimes it's easy, right? All good. Absorb this information very slowly, right? We don't want people rushing. And then this, this dialogue continues week after week, month after month, month after month, and they get this relationship with their coach that's super powerful. You know, I mean, I went a, a year and a half before I met one of my coaches. Guy's in Colorado, I'm in California, but we talk on this thing every day and it's like, you know, I know I'm like my best friend. So this system, this communication system, because it's daily, works. Anybody have little teenagers? No one has teenagers? You have teenagers, <laughs> right? What are they doing every day, right? Bang, 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 bang. That's how they're making friendships and maintaining them. Oddly, that model that your kids are using is what we use, and it works incredibly well. So there's that. We talked about this, certification is an organic process now. It's not a forced objective. It's just a process. It's an outcome based on a proper process. So that's, you know, I can't tell you how many good times and good results we've had with this. So this whole thing started, of course, because we wanted to train people into a lifestyle of scuba diving based on retention, right? We absolutely want retention. It's the most important thing. From a business standpoint, from an ethical standpoint, from just being a good human being, we want people to continue to scuba dive. That's the point, once they come in. We don't want, you know, you guys in a shop, you see it all the time, right? In they come, they get their card, they go to their, they go to Roatan, they do their dives, and that's it. You don't see them again. Or you see them in three years when they're going to go to Cozumel. Retention is the most important thing in scuba diving. It's what we, the only tool we really have to perpetrate what we're doing and to bring the fun and the crazy and the interesting and the, the difficulty and all of that to our students. So this model of building a team, building a community, right? So in my coaching group, people I'm coaching, we have one team that lives close together and we have the other group of people, and I'm starting to now, because they all start disparately, I'm kind of starting to guide them onto the same program. So now, they're all starting to go to our very, very elemental tech um, content, and I'm sneaking it in on them, so they kind of don't even notice, right? Equipment configuration, a little bit of a scent profiling, things like this. So at some point, they're all gonna be in the same page, going through our technical training. Whether they ever use it to go deeper than 100 feet, I don't care. But I know it makes them better recreational divers. And now I've got this broader nationwide team 
that can work together, that can meet for trips and stuff like that. So that's been working really, really well. The mechanics are really simple, right? They decide to start coaching, they start their subscription, they do an intake form about their diving. We, t we tell them that whatever number they put down on their number of dives, we're gonna divide by two. So don't lie, because everybody does. Um, today's plan is our third party piece of software. They open the, it automatically opens the account. We have all those APIs in place, so it all kind of happens in the back end. It opens up all their courses for them, so they get all their UTD courses. We figure out who the best coach for them is. The coach does a secondary interview. They get to know each other. The coach starts to populate the calendar and the client gets better. Not just faster, but better. And it just works incredibly well. Costs right now are current pricing. For recreational, it's $99 a month. For technical program, it's $139 a month. This is for the structural program. And then the instructors, in water instructors, charge outside of that. So when you go to the pool, you pay a fee to the instructor like you normally would. So this is why you can maintain the low price, keep the program going. I got a ton of people living in the winter right now, and they're all working on the academic part, the back end stuff, things like that, an occasional pool session. They're not spending much money. Once they start going to quarries and oceans and things like that, there'll be a fee from the instructor to charge them. So you're not giving up anything financially on this. All you're doing is having somebody else kind of guide the, the academic part and, and the lifestyle part. And then you get the students back in the water, which is cool. Um, and that's my spiel, 20 minutes. A new record for a technical section talk. <laughs> So, what can we talk about that I missed or you have questions of or you'd like longer explanations about? Okay, so Gene's question was, do we allow the, the clients to do their own goal setting? And the answer is absolutely yes. Stupid. People want certification. They want to be able to go diving. They want to go have fun. They want what everybody else has, which is a certification card. We just want to control the way they get that card, right? Now, we still get people coming into the program who call me up and say, oh crap, I'm going on this trip I've known about for four months, but they're offering me nitrox. It's like, all right, no, no problem. We'll get you a transactional class. We'll get your nitrox class done in a weekend. We're still able to, to massage the program that way to help, these, help the clients out when they need it. But it's a, it's a team process between coach and client. The same way it is between cyclist and cycling coach, triathlete and triathlon coach, right? Scuba student or client and scuba coach or instructor. You've got to, this team has to work together. And you get this team to help you with. So yeah, we want to know on day one on that interview, what are your goals? Do you need a card? Do you want a card? Do you not care about a card? Lots of people come in, they don't care about a card. They just want to be better divers. Lots of people come in and say, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to be a cave diver. It's like, all right, great, we'll put you on that program. You know, it'll take you X number of months, years from where you are today. So, you know, it's a malleable, individual, personalized program that we develop with each client individually. There's no cookie cutter thing on this. That makes sense? You have anything to add to that? Did I miss? Okay. Anybody else? So the question is, um, are we, thank you. The question is, are we um, operating under RSTC sandwich? So U UTD is not a member of RSTC. We're a training agency, been around forever, cards accepted all over the world, all that. We just did not, not join RSTC. Um, we ha our open water actually conforms to RSTC standards for the most part, but we don't do that. So the answer is no. I don't really care. Yeah. No. Or WRSTC or the only one we do care a little about and we haven't done it yet is EUF because there, are, there is some reciprocity with some of the European governments. So we're kind of working on that. But RSTC, no. Yeah. Sure. I'm going to come over here and ask and you can ask me and then I'll tell everybody. Oh, the resort's response to the C-card. The C-card's accepted all over the world. No problem. No questions. 
about every two years I get a call from an operator said who are you it's like well here we are and then it's fine it's from day one it's never actually been a problem it's odd right in the United States if you want to start a training agency all you really need is an insurance policy for your instructors so we got that and then we were running yeah. So are the, are the client certifications then transferable to another training agency should they choose to go to another one 10 years, 5 years from now or whatever? Well, they'll have a C card, right, right. that says open water, nitrox, advanced, tech one, whatever it says. Just like anybody with a C card, okay. right? I mean, they, you, and so at this point, and Ben and I have been talking about this for weeks now. Right now, this, is only op this program's only open on the coaching level to UTD instructors. And dive masters. This is interesting, right? Dive masters in UTD are also coaches, but they can only take certified divers in the water to their own level of training. But it's cool because they can work on skills development, all this other stuff with certified divers, and it's been that's been a successful part also. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else? What else? What else is interesting? So the, are the clients placed on a team? Is the team local to them or are they spread out? Again, this is an individualized personal program, so everything's different, right? I got three guys in Maryland came in together. They, they're the ones who dive together every Tuesday night, right? I got a guy in Northern California, another one in Florida, somebody here. Those guys, they have to work out their own teams, right? But the beauty of it is I'm in San Diego. <laughs> and I'm coaching them, then I'm pointing them toward UTD instructors around the country to go do their thing. One of them is a scientific diver, right? So we've got a whole team of scientific diving instructors up in Seattle. So you're going to Seattle. It works like that. You know, we use our resources to support the diving part while we're using our resources to support the coaching training part. So the question is, if there's no local coach for the, the, diver, for the diver, how does that work? And um, the answer to that question is that from the coaching standpoint, it doesn't matter where we are because everything's happening either online, by a phone, by a web conference. You know, don't you want to be Zoom, right? Don't you want to have a company that became a verb? That's awesome. <laughs> so we do it that way. And then, so what I was saying earlier, we then take, the, take these students, these clients, these divers, and we guide them to instructors around the country or the world, wherever they are. So like, I have all these coaching clients, I never dive with them. I see their videos, I talk to them, I work with them on the whole structural academic thing, and then I send them off to UTD instructors to get the, the in-water training. You can only use one or the other. Uh, yeah. I got a good tie into that, because we had a, I had a student in Norway, and I'm based in Denmark, and he took our Essentials of Technical Diving program, and he went through it quite well, uh, but as we say, no one, uh, everyone passes in the UTD Essentials class, just not everyone passes at the same time. And he had struggling a little bit with, during the class, a little bit with his trim and his finning technique mostly. Because um, usually the tr to be able to stay in trim, you need to be able to grab the water with your fins. And so he had to work on that a little bit. So we enrolled him in a coaching-like program. And that's what, like way, way, way in the beginning of all this talk, and we basically used video that his teammates took of him and he sent it to me. I could give him some feedback on that video and slowly but surely he would get better and then we would meet up at another class that he joined and pass with flying colors. So that way we keep the, the focus and we keep the interaction between the student and the instructor without just sending a student away and saying, well, you need to work on your trim and your finning techniques and then and then it kind of ebbs out because they don't have that feedback, right? It's like, it's like you trying to groom your hair. Oh, sorry, you're like in my boat. Like you're trying to groom your hair without a, without a mirror in front of you. It's, it's really hard to do. You're like make the partition in the middle and you're like guessing, you know? With us, it comes natural, but with some people, it doesn't. So with, with the coaching program in that regard, where the instructor is not near the diver, it's, it's via, yeah interactions and video zoom meetings and stuff like that and video reviews and it, it, it keeps the you know the line taut so to speak yeah we proved it out and yeah. it works this is not something that is you know we didn't make this up thursday to be at the show we've been doing this for a couple years now it's been working amazing well so look at the so the question is you have divers who are very focused on not going deep not going deep easy 
Easy. Recreational dive. My favorite kind of diving, 20 feet, lots of fish. Exactly. Okay. So, think out of the box. What would make them appreciate that more and be better at it? Trim, buoyancy control, breathing techniques, uh, position control for cameras, team awareness, under, really understanding the, the ecology of that location. Um, you can come up with 50 things that would make them better in that environment. And it's 50 workouts you put in their calendar over the course of six months and you send them on their way. Right? So what's some saying? Get them out of the box. Right? The ones who can't carry the tank to the boat, get them in the fitness program. You know? The ones who weigh 300 pounds too much, get them on a nutritional program. What I'm saying is make it lifestyle oriented. Go past our, our vision of diving is breathing underwater and we got to put the regulator on the tank like this. Get out of that box completely and look at what would make somebody ex embrace scuba as a lifestyle and think about retention. Because they're going to do that dive 26 times and they're going to be done with scuba diving. But if all of a sudden they get on a rockfish thing or they get on a shark program or they get on an octopus count or you give them find your scientific divers and let them help do, like I used to do urchin relocations in Southern California. That's super fun. You know, I went on the boat, I got, you know, did their boat orientation. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm a scientific diver relocating sea urchins. There's a million things you can do if you think out of the box. But if you stay in your, and I'm not saying this about you, if you stay in your outcome-oriented vision of scuba training, you'll never get out of the box and your students won't get out of that box. You know what I mean? So just think crazy. That's how we came up with this in the first place. Just think crazy and see what turns up. It's, it's amazing what turns up. Thank you, thank you all for coming. I'm excited that we had an audience and I'm grateful for you all to be here and um, I really appreciate your time. This is Ben, training director at UTD. Kim Cardenas over there is a UTD instructor based in Ventura.